Good morning, good morning. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. This is the day the Lord has made me share, rejoice, and be glad in it. I give honor, glory, and praise to the great Jehovah God who allowed you and I another day, another day for you and I to worship Him in spirit and truth through worship. On today, my brothers and sisters, I pray that you've had a blessed weekend. Not only a blessed weekend, that you've been safe and trusting God to bless your going out and coming in. Although there is a holiday weekend, but we know, my brothers and sisters, that God is an all knowing seeing God. But at the same time, God that never sleep no slumber. It's nothing that escapes His presence. So I don't want you, my brothers and sisters, to go out and fear. For the word of God says He has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So, my brothers and sisters, I pray that today that you just woke up and just gave God honor and glory and praise. For the word of God tells us. That we shall bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue and continue to be in my mouth and your mouth. Because all honor, glory, and praise is due unto him. My brothers, I'm just so grateful to God for allowing us to come together another day. Another day he allowed you and I to assemble ourselves together to be encouraged and to encourage each other and edify one another through my the word of God and through my encouragement and support of one another. My brother and sister, today I want to encourage you from Luke, Luke the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 24. And our topic today, our excuses will keep us out of the kingdom of God. Our excuses will keep us out of the kingdom of God. So we're going to touch. We're going to touch and agree and pray and believe God to do only what God does. And that's continue to save you, deliver, set free, and empower to lead and to God by his holy spirit so my brothers and sisters we touching the ground today i want you to believe god no matter what you're confronted with today no matter what's before you um the known and the unknown um we're gonna believe god that god that say he never leave nor forsake us he will build us even to the end of time and that's because those of us are believers that we have been indwelt and embodied by the holy spirit of god our eyes, the Holy Father, we magnify and glorify your holy name. We welcome your holy presence. We welcome your anointing that destroys everybody in you. We welcome your Holy Spirit to have your free will and course in and through our lives today, God, that all that's been said today will bring glory unto you. You promised, God, that if we open our mouths that you will fill it with your words. So we thank you even now, God, anointing our ear gates to be here where the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church the body of Christ, that you will anoint our eyes, that we will see through by our eyes of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you will anoint our hearts, that our hearts will receive your word today, that your word will be hidden in our heart, God, that whatever we're in need of through by that power and dwelling in the power of your word, God, whether we need to be saved, that you will save, heal, deliver, and power, lead and guide and instruct through by your Holy Spirit. Even, Father God, draw us closer and closer to you, that we be more in an intimate relationship with you, that we, Father God, can encounter and know what it does truly feel like to now be born again of the Spirit of God, now being sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. So as we study your word on today, God, we pray you are already, God, for all those that are listening, Lord God, that our hearts and minds be transformed by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, we give you glory. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I'm always excited about the Word of God. And today, as we um, are reading your hearing, Luke the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 24. And the Word of God says, And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. 
And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. My brothers and sisters, I excuse will keep us out of the kingdom of God. We see here, if you read um, Luke the 14 chapters entirely, it begins out with Jesus. You know how it is with the Sabbath. And after the Sabbath, we see here how one of the chief uh, Pharisees had invited Jesus to eat bread with him, to die with him. But in the midst of Jesus being there with them, we see in the midst there was a man there, a certain man that had droops in it. And that was more so like the floor of the building of your cavity from sudden. Some people said maybe due to kidney failure, lung disease, or heart issues, or cancer, or some other issue that caused the juice of the swelling, you know how it is you see individuals sometimes today, individuals they have um, a great buildup of blood. It's not so much because of some illness or sickness or disease, it's because of how we eat. We have too much sodium intake or the, the foods that we eat. Or sometimes individuals they have swellings due to maybe allergic reaction to medication. But for whatever the reason was, the healer Jesus himself, he was on the scene. So Jesus himself, he asked him, he said, even ask the lawyers, and the, you know the knowledge of people, the lawyers and the Pharisees, he asked them, well, on the Sabbath, um, do you see a reason why this man should not be healed? They did not say anything. And then Jesus asked, had mentioned to him as well, he said, well, if a man have an, an ass or an ox and he fall into a pit, uh, would you think it would be right for him on the Sabbath to um, take him out of the pit? What would you see that the owl is more important than the man that needs to be healed? So Jesus healed the man because what happened is on the Sabbath, you know how they said that on the Sabbath day was a day of rest and they was against the law if anybody did any work during that day. But Jesus Christ himself, he himself knew that healing, healing would be of God. And we see here that individuals care more for their livestock and animals on the Sabbath more than a human being. But we see here, my brothers and sisters, as we go further into Luke the 14th chapter, that how the even in the midst of that, Jesus himself, he noticed that even that Jesus himself wasn't the only one that the chief Pharisee had invited to dinner. There was other guests. And you wonder, why did they invite this man, knowing that Jesus, who he was? There's no way that Jesus can see people afflicted and affirmed, knowing that he has compassion amongst them and see them remain in the state that they're in. But anyway, my brothers and sisters, we see Jesus, how he was speaking parables and how that Jesus noticed that those, a lot of those that had got there had gathered that how someone was looking for the chief seats, you know, the front seats. You know how it is when you are invited to a dinner or a banquet or a wedding or whatever the gathering may be. A lot of time individuals want to get closer to the host. They want to be at the head table. Everybody cannot be at the head table, but or even at the head table, the closest to the host. What we see here that Jesus noticed how those that was invited, how they was looking for the chief room, the chief seats to be closer to the host. We see here, Jesus spoke in a parable. He spoke to them. He said, you know what? He was telling them, he said that just to help them, he said, if a certain man had bid you um, to even to a wedding, he was telling them how that you should not want to take the chief seats. He was telling, he was now speaking to the guests. He was speaking to the guests. He was telling, you don't want to take the chief seats because it may be someone in the midst more honorable than you and they're more honorable than you. And then the host that had bidden you and invited you will have to come to you and tell you, my friend, um, if you don't mind, I need you to move into a, a, the back seat or to a, another lower seat or to another room because this is our honorable guest. And this is where he or she or whomever of most of respect and honor needs to sit. And like you said, then we will feel shame and we will feel guilt that now that we took our high seat, never have to remove what we have sit. I have instances where that... Even myself, I've been invited to a wedding and, and I was on the list to um, attend the wedding, but they did not have me on the, the listing of at which table I should be. So someone seated me at a, another table. But then my brothers and some individuals, that name was on the guest list. They had assigned tables. And guess what? You know what happens. Some of them were sitting at tables because they want to be more closer. But they sat in a table 
that wasn't even assigned to them. And some of them was had to move and some of them remained. So we see here, even I knew, even going to the wedding, that some of the close family members that her and her husband, that her sister didn't invite me to the wedding, they had a close seat. But someone had took that seat. But because of love and respect and honor the wedding that was going on, they did not make a scene. They just went and sat at another table. That's not the case in all instances, my brothers. Because some individuals, you know how it is, will ask you, even in church, so, you know, you don't mind removing, this is my seat. This is in my mind side seat. And still on hold of themselves. But we see here how that Jesus was telling them in this parable. He said, you know what? If you learn how to humble yourself, he said, those that humble themselves shall be exalted. Those that exalt themselves shall be humble. So, we're still dealing with a spirit of humility here, even in hearing the word of God. But even with the guests that was invited, we see here that Jesus, how that he was invited, how he was just talking to, he was invited. And most time they invite Jesus, some, they will invite Jesus to continue to teach because they love his teaching and his ministry. And then with some, like here with the Pharisees, we see, want to set Jesus up, want to condemn Jesus, watching Jesus and see if he's going to get out of line of what the law was written. But we see here how that Jesus now, he's talking to the Pharisee, um, he was telling him that even that now, he said, when you bid individuals to dinner, you need not to invite um, your family members, your brothers and your sisters and your cousins and your neighbors and your friends and those that have wealth, those have plenty, those that because you invite them to dinner, they can invite you to dinner because you do it to them, they can do it to you. He took and told him, so what you need to do is, you need to, when you have these dinners, you need to, what? You need to invite the poor, the lame, the halt, and the blind. These are the individuals, and the main, these are the individuals that you need to be invited to dinner. Some individuals that cannot pay you back and invite you to dinner. But guess what? He was saying that how that you will be justified during the resurrection when you put the first work first. Those that can't repay you. That's what the word of God tells us. Why do we always, and what it is to love someone because they love you. What about loving those that don't love you? What about feeding those that can't feed you? Clothes those that can't clothe you. Hose those, house those that can't house you. Deliver those that can't deliver you and can't deliver themselves. I tell you, Jesus said to my spirit of humility. It's too often, my brothers and sisters, we see here, it brings us to the point, even how here, through by the word of God, how even one of his guests, one of the um, chief Pharisees' guests, how it brings us now to Luke the 15th chapter. We notice that um, even in Luke 14, how that um, 14, how the one of the guests was saying, how great it would be for someone to eat, eat in the kingdom of God. My brothers and sisters, this is what brings us now here to verse 15, when it said, And when one of them that sat at meat with him, Heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Him himself, in the midst of Jesus talking, in the midst of being that sin, Jesus healing the man with juice, and Jesus concerned even about them being concerned about the animals, their oxes, or the asses more than the man. But we see here that Jesus see here that that's here now. Jesus given, uh, he's given them all. Jesus talking to them all like he's talking to us today. Now Jesus here is saying that it was a certain man. Now he's talking about a certain man that prepared a great supper. <laughs> he had prepared a great supper and he invited many. And he invited many people to this great supper. But the ones that he invited, we see here that they start having excuses. And during that time, you know how it is, even in during our time when people are invited to supper, they're invited to banquets or feasts or to weddings or whatever the case may be. We love to get a head council when we have the right amount of food and individuals will the RSVP reserve and let individuals know I'm coming. How many additional guests that you bring? But we see here, my brothers, according to the word of God, these individuals had already committed because they were saying during that time, whenever they were having dinners or great feasts, people would confirm that they're coming. But we see here now that this certain man that had prepared this great supper has told his servant, now I need you. They said they may know the particular day, but they may not know the particular time that this great supper would take place. But we see here when the servant was told to go out and tell the ones that was invited that supper has now been prepared and is ready. Come and let us break bread together. So we see here how it says that there were excuses that says that all of them in verse 18, it says, and they all with one consent began to make excuses. Now, it said many was invited. 
But all, the same consent, all in agreement, start making excuses. So it means that these three individuals here are not the only one that had excuses. They said all of them made consent. So we see here that it was more than three that had excuses why they couldn't come. But we see here that the first one said that he bought a, a piece of ground that he needs to go see. He needs to go check it out. So you like, who would buy land before they can even see it? My brother and sister, this happened during the time we're in now. There are many individuals that have bought homes and houses due to the economy, due by virtual um, scenes on the computers or whatever social media or whatever um, communication they have in viewing houses and then them are bought houses and they see what they look like on the screens or on printouts or what information they had received from emails or whatever but then they get there that does not look like what it looked like I know before I relocated and I was looking for houses and the realtor would send me pictures of houses that in certain locations and then when I was on my way down to look at these houses he let me know he said Charlene I just want you to know that these houses are here they're not even on the land yet this is what they should look like so I tell you glory be to God can you imagine paying for land that looked like it is and you get there it's not the land that you paid for can you imagine buying a house and you get a house and you get there it's not the same house so now he's done bought a house now he wants to go see this ground and land that he has purchased. So he said, Will you please pray the I pray the excuse me. Then we see here now. We have now another man that said how he had what? He had bought oxen and he wanted to go prove them. And he prayed also that he be excused. So you <laughs> you would think you're purchasing something without seeing it, without proving it before you buy. So then he I'm not saying these may not be legitimate excuses, but what I'm saying, my brother and sister, when you have an assignment that's why in us prioritizing our schedules, what we are supposed to be doing, what we see it in spite of. The second one said, he need pray, did you excuse me? And you know how it is when individuals are getting married. And now you see here, this third individual said, this man said, I married a wife, therefore I cannot come. I'm married now. Can I, I'll check with you later. So he said, um, things has changed now. Now that I'm married, I cannot come to the great supper. But we see here. <laughs> And the midst of it, the servant, the servant, like he's saying, he made a record, a report of these three that we see written in the word of God. But there was many others that had excuses. And now we see here that when the servant goes to his Lord and his master, he gives him a report of an excuses. You know, I bought land, I can't come. I got bought oxen, I can't come. Now I'm married, I can't come. So when he goes to the Lord and master, he gets angry. I guess he gets angry. He's saying, I have been prepared all this food, this meat, and, and, and everything, and, and I've got people on the scene prepared to serve individuals. Now individuals saying they cannot come to this great supper. So we see now, in spite of, now the Lord and his master, the servant, getting angry. He said, this is what I need you to do. He said in verse 21, so the servant came and after he showed the report unto his master, he told him, although he got angry, <laughs> the world said be angry but said not he got angry and well in the midst of getting angry he did not stop doing what he had planned to do and that was to serve this great supper to the individuals he invited that didn't come but he said somebody anybody somebody is going to eat this food so he's telling them here that because he said it's not going to the waste he said it's not going to the waste there's somebody that needs to eat so we see here in verse 21, when he told the servant, he said, go out quickly. He said, go out into the streets, go out into the lanes, go out into the cities. He said, I want you to bring them to them. He said, go bring, bring them back with you. He said, bring hither the poor, the main, and the hump, and the blind. He said, bring them back that they may eat this great supper that I have prepared. Since those that were invited has decided to change their mind even after the grid to come. And now they decided they have so many excuses they can't attend this great supper. And he said, I need you to go back, go out and bring them in. But we see here, not only that, when the servant came back and gave report unto his master and Lord, he said, I've done as you commanded me and there's still room. A lot of people love to sing that song. It's still room at the cross for you and I. <laughs> Is there room? Have we been making excuses? These excuses does not keep us to enter into the kingdom of God. 
There will not be, there will be room, but when our name is struck and taken off the invitation list, you know how did you invite people? They say I'm not coming or I'm coming, and sometimes they reserve it. And I've been invited to weddings in certain instances that I couldn't come, and I've asked them because uh, such and such a person come in my stead because you got to realize sometimes people have these functions and these banquets and weddings. They are they expense. These plates of dinners are paid for, and they want don't want to waste. Paying money for food to be thrown. We know it's like you raised up. You don't waste food. So what I'm saying here, I think God is saying here that there was still more room. And in the midst of there being more room, and when he reported back to his Lord and Master, he said, okay, it's more room. Okay, I need you now. You don't went to the cities. You don't went to the lanes and got the main halt the blind. I need you now. I need you go into here in verse 23. He said, I need you going to the highways and the hedges. And I need you to compel them to come into my house to be filled. This man, <laughs> this servant, he said, this his certain man here has made this great supper. He said, no matter what, this house is going to be full this day. You know, God said this word. He would add uh, to the household of faith daily, so should be saved. So my brothers and sisters, no matter how much individuals are rejecting the gospel, God have a remnant of people that are going to attend the great marriage feast. They have a a great multitude of people that's going to be at the supper because we see here now even after all, that this is Jesus speaking, this is Jesus speaking, these are parables this is Jesus speaking the parable to the chief Pharisee that invited him to dinner he's speaking, the, speaking these parables to the guests that are at this dinner now we see here when we come to 20, verse 24, here goes Jesus saying, Jesus said, for I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Glory be to you. Now Jesus, now we're not talking about the wedding. We're not talking about this great supper that this certain man prepared in, in this um, parable. We see here Jesus Christ himself saying, he said, I'm not talking about nobody's wedding. I'm talking about this is marriage feast. I'm not talking about this is great supper. I'm talking about my supper. He's saying, none of these that bitter will taste of my supper. Glory be to God. I tell you, I love to eat my brother's sister, but when it comes to breaking bad bread with my Lord and Savior, Redeemer face to face one day, that is one I am not going to miss, and I'm going to believe it in faith. So we see here, our excuses will keep us out of the kingdom of God. What excuses do you have today, my brothers? We see here, according to the word of God in this parable, it's saying that you know how that the Jews was God's chosen people, and Although Jesus goes from city to city, village to village, teaching in the synagogues, how they even, even when it came to the Sabbath, there was instances where it's that earlier in Luke, uh, the book of Luke, we see that they always trying to condemn Jesus for healing on the Sabbath. But we know there was an instance of a withered man, man with a withered hand, uh, with an arm, and that Jesus, what, healed him. And there was a woman that had been affirmed by the demons for 18 years, and Jesus healed her on the Sabbath. There was a blind man. The baby was like, well, you know, Jesus who sinned? Was it the parents of the man? He said, neither one of them has sinned, but that I be glorified. That Jesus gave the blind man sight. So we see here, there are several instances that Jesus, do. they really didn't know who Jesus was. They're always trying to condemn Jesus. They always question Jesus what the million authority he had, which he know. He has the million authority from his Father, which in heaven, from which he came from who he has ascended back in heaven to. But we see in my brothers and sisters, Jesus did not allow anyone to change the mission that the Father had given him because he knew he was sent to seek and to save those with a loss, he said. He knew he was sent to offer his life as a ransom for many. Jesus knew that. So we see here, my brothers and sisters, according to the word of God, when I see this, how that even God's chosen people, the Jews, how that many of them rejected him as the Messiah. Many of them believed that individuals, that they were um, circumcised of the flesh, that they could not be saved, they could not be a part of God. And they did not um, honor and represent all these different types of feast days that they have. But I thank God, I thank God for Jesus, how he made it possible, even when he had some of his chosen people that rejected him, that didn't even obey him, didn't even believe he was who he was. 
uh, we see how that he made provisions. He made provisions for the Gentiles that have a, a ability to be grafted into the family of God as he made for us as Christians as followers today. But we see here, this is what it's saying. It seems like according to the word of God and from Sutton, that when God had chose his chosen people, and we do know in scriptures how that even when the word of God, when he even told them that those at first going to be last and last going to be first. Because even his chosen people, how they would want other individuals to obey the Jewish laws in which they wasn't even obeying themselves. And that's why the word of God says, it's not a true Jew, it's not someone that's been circumcised according to the flesh, but a circumcision of heart. And that's what it is for every born again believer today. We must have a heart transformation. When we see here, my brothers and sisters, you know how it is when it's at work inside out, start at home first. When he told them that you are being filled, you be empowered with the Holy Spirit, and you should be witness unto me. He said that when the Holy Ghost will come upon you, receive power to be witness unto me, and from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. So we see here how that even though they went to the cities and they went to the lanes, and then they start going into the outskirts. <laughs> you see how when he first mentioned about go out into the cities and the lanes, and he said, and bring them back. And also, then he started telling them, go into the hedge and the highway, he tell them to compel them. You wonder, you probably wonder why what, um, he say how that the um, master and the Lord was telling them to compel them. Because you think about that even with most likely the Gentiles and other cultures of people, um, how that even how the Jews saw the Gentiles as being less than than them, and even sometimes considered to be as dogs and unworthy, as unfit for nothing, unlearned, and not even worth wasting time for. And that's how some individuals have seen us today. That now we're new creatures in Christ, but we thank God for Jesus. But we see here that that's why they said they have to compel some individuals, my brothers and sisters, we can invite. And some of them will come. And then some of them you have to bring. And some of them you got to compel. Meaning that you're not just inviting. You're encouraging them to come. And let's think about it. Those in the hedge and the highways. Probably those. Probably some like the individual with it. Probably some of those out there was demon possessed. Those that are blind. Those that had all manner of sickness and diseases. Some probably haven't even taken baths. Unclean. And had all kind of foul odors or Whatever the situation may be, some may have been half dressed, some may not have been dressed at all. But he told them to go out and get them, compel them to come in. They may have been a little fury, may have been a little intimidated, because you know how it is. That's even some of them because of um, their condition. We know how it is today. We have homeless people, and some people see homeless people, they spitting on them, they kicking them, they kill them, they're abusing them. Even we know how it is with individuals that have some kind of infirmities in the flesh, have some kind of deformity, some people that are lame, some people that can't have walking wheelchairs using cane, some people that can't have see, talk, can't communicate of different languages, of different um, communities, of different cultures or ethnicity, that how people treat them differently. We know how we ourselves have been treated even just by the race that we are. But I thank God when he said he the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He has no respect of person. And we need to see here that our excuses can keep us out of the kingdom of God. What excuses have we had today? Some are saying, well, you know what? We see here when I see according to the word of God. How that we as Christians, as followers of Christ today, even that we know the word of God, so all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And for the wages of sin is still, still death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But God has made a provision. He made provisions through by Jesus Christ that we too now can be sons and daughters in the family of God. And that we too need not to have a deaf ear. We need to see here, according to the word of God, we need to see here how that we can see the certain man. We can see even Jesus. They said the man in the middle is now the son of God that has now been exalted in heaven on the right hand of the Father, sit interceding for you and I. What we need to see is up today, that even according to this parable, that how God, God have men, women, boys and girls, the crane and clan, the word of God, in and out of season. But now, we now, the servants of God, when we go forth as Jesus, Jesus said he came to what? Not to be ministered unto or to be or to be served. He came to minister and offer his life of ransom. That is why he came to seek and to save those who are lost. Now that Jesus in heaven on the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I has sit by the comfort of the Holy Spirit, like he told the disciples, that he empowered them, 
He told us we need to do the great commission. We need to go ye therefore unto all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all what some he have commanded us. And lo, he will meet us always, even to the end of the earth. So he has sent back the power of the Holy Spirit to give us the holy boldness and the power to go forth and do what he did. And this Jesus is our prime example. So we see here, my brothers and sisters, someone may not invite us to a great supper, but guess what? That we may eat meat and drink drinks. But Jesus said, when they asked him, when Jesus was fasting, they asked him, had he eaten? He said, yes, he had already eaten. His eating was to do the will of his father. So my brothers and sisters, we see here, we need to take heed whenever when God said he'll prepare a table for us before the presence of our enemies. He has prepared a table for us. He has prepared the word of God for you and I that we need to eat. We need to drink. We need to ask God to give us. And I've asked God. I pray to ask God. Give me a thirst after your righteousness. Give me a thirst after your word. More than physical food and physical drink that I may grow spiritually. That I may be able to be a better witness, a better minister, a proclaimer of the word of God in and out of seeds that dying men and women, boys and girls will cry. What must I do to be saved? To uh, walk into my healing, walk in my deliverance, to have my needs met um, according to the word of God. But we see it, my brothers, the key is this. We need to start making excuses. What excuse do we have that when God has sent his man certain woman, boy, girl, as I mentioned already, to decree and declare the word of God that causes us to be saved, to be healed, to be delivered, to be empowered, to give us God's instruction on how we can live, that we accept Christ as our Lord and Redeemer and Savior in this new life in Christ. Because the Word of God tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, we are new creatures. The old things are passed away and all things become anew. And now that we are new creatures in Christ, we can only know how to live as new creatures in Christ is through by the Word of God. My brother says we was already born. We was already born in that sinful nature. But now that's why even he told Nicodemus he must be born again of the water and of the Spirit of God. When we're truly, truly born again of the Spirit of God and we study and meditate upon God where we walk in obedience to God's word, my brothers and sisters is well pleasing to him. Let's start making excuses why we keep rejecting this gospel. God in the same way, guess what? God has sent, he said, some sow, some water, some plant, but God give increase. We have had more than, here we see what he said, he sent his servant as if it's one. But we have had more than one servant. They cream and declare the word of God to us. And we have what? We have made excuses why we would not repent of our sins and accept Christ our Lord and Savior Redeemer. After God said, I love you so much. When he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever. But leaving him shall not perish, for he sent him in the world not to condemn the world, but the world through him may be saved. He sent Jesus to save you and I. Even while we were yet sinners, he said he committed his love to us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for you and I because of the love. That love that he has for you and I. So why don't we don't show forth the love of God? That he showed for us, and he said, We should love the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, soul, love thy neighbor ourselves. Do we really love? We said we love ourselves. If we don't love God and love others, we don't really love ourselves. We don't. And we gotta, even that's what he said. You see the order, he said, Love the Lord thy God with all that mind, heart, soul, love thy neighbor as thyself. So what God is saying is, Love, he's giving us order, just like he was telling them about humbling ourselves before a holy and righteous God. And this is what we see here. The excuses that we make while we reject that gospel. But my brothers and sisters, we see here according to the word of God. We can reject, but God have a remnant of people that's not going to reject the gospel. There's a lot of people today that are crying out that need to be saved, need to be healed, need to be delivered. My brothers, it's like they're saying, when you're talking about salvation, the individual said, you telling me believing in the God that you said able to heal, deliver, and save, and you tell me to repent of my sin and be saved, and then I, now that I'm saved and, and now I'm still afflicted and I'm of my body, my brothers and sisters, the first word first is that's acknowledging that, that we were sinners, and we we're not, not only acknowledging it, but realizing that we were born in sin, whether we want to acknowledge that we we're sinners or not, we was born in sin. The word of God said, our mother conceived us in nakedness. And we was born in sin. And the curse came way from Adam way before time. But I thank God for Jesus, the only righteous son of God, that made it possible that you and I could be saved. And that's why we, the preachers and teachers today, and witnesses, the believers in general, are proclaiming our gospel in and out of season, reference to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The one not only who resurrected, but he walked amongst the earth 40 days. For you and I, that we may have a right 
to eternal life that we may live and not die and declare the works of the Lord which have saved us, delivered and healed us. We should be a part of the same word of God and to other individuals. Now that we have knowledge of the Son of God, we should what we should be sharing with others that they too will repent of their sin. He said, All of we confess our sins. He is faithful and just forgives us of our sins and declares us of all our righteous. And my brothers, even excuses. The excuses that we made, some individuals said, I need more time. I need to get myself together. And if we could get ourselves together, we wouldn't need God. <laughs> we wouldn't have to believe in Jesus who said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life. There's no way to the Father except me by me. We're talking about me going to heaven and a house, but we have not accepted the gospel, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not going to happen. We see here. What excuses? Then sometimes we love to use excuses. I don't want to go to church with all those hypocrite folks. They sin us. They, they're not even saved themselves. Well, we're all sinners. We're all born in sin. <laughs> we're all born at the same level of sin. But Jesus Christ himself, God made it possible. That through by the shedding blood of Jesus Christ. He said, without the shedding blood, there will be no remission, no forgiveness of sin. The lamb, the ghost, the bullets couldn't do it. The priest couldn't do it. They put a rope around him. He put in there. And what fell dead is trying to pull him out. But I tell you what, my brothers and sisters, according to the word of God today, if we take heed, read those of us that are called by God, and knowing that we need to go out and decree and declare the word of God. Can't you see it's harvest time? The word of God tells us. Now harvest comes with the labors of few. Pray to the Lord of harvest that he raised some more labors in his vineyard. Me and my brothers and sisters, there's work to do. We should be going forth. Proclaim this gospel in and out of season. Let's not be concerned about our soul, own soul salvation. What about our children, our family members, our friends? Even here we see how that we need to be concerned about the ones we don't even know about. Even... Um, if they reject, even if they reject, you know, sometimes even Jesus' brother, James, didn't believe him in the beginning. Jesus didn't allow how people felt about him, how they called him the devil himself. Even how that when Jesus was arrested, he was betrayed by Judas and denied by Peter. He did not kick them to the curb. Even Judas took so much to the point. The money they got, he even to take it back to the one who gave the money. They didn't even want it back. Well, he just throw it out, just leave it and go and kill himself. So we see here, Peter even denied him. We see that Jesus forgave him. He forgave him because he still used him in a mighty way. And that's why I thank God when he said, Word of God, he's not slight concerning his promises. As some men count slight, so he's long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. That we all come to repentance. All they he wants us to repent of our sins. Repent of our sins and turn to the right way of living according to the word of God. God has an ounce for everything that we need according to the word of God. That's why my brother says we need to start making excuses. You know, sometimes people say, I'm still young. I want to have fun. I don't want to be saved. I got plenty of time. I'm young. Oh, really? Uh, have you been paying attention to the age of people been dying? And you know what? The word of God tells us. <laughs> and they're going to be doing just like during the time of the Lord. They're going to be married and giving to marriage and drinking and partying and, and, and living perverse and moral lifestyles. And to the day of Jesus Christ's return. And guess what? The same way the first earth and heaven were destroyed, he said, Heaven and earth shall pass with my words shall ever stand. And guess what? He said, It's going to be a new kingdom. The kingdom of God. We need to go ahead and be born again that we can go ahead and be enrolled into the family of God and the book of life in heaven. That we can be a part of the sons and daughters and the kingdom of God. Because my brothers and sisters, when a new heaven and new earth come, mean that the one we're in now is going to be destroyed. So that's going to be, he said that it's not, he's no longer going to destroy by flood water. Yes, we've been hearing a lot of floods, we've been hearing a lot of earthquakes, a lot of tornadoes and tsunamis and wildfires. It ain't the end yet. <laughs> It's not the end yet. But he said it's going to be fire. You know what happened to Saddam and Gomorrah because of the sinfulness and immorality of the city? He rained down fire and brimstone. Set it up a fire, burn up everything, purify the earth. That's what, you know how they said with fire. And that's what they said when John the Baptist said. He says that when he come, he was uh, preaching under repentance. And he said, and he was doing the baptizing of repentance. He says, one come mighty me that I don't have the right that the loose chest to untouch the loose, the loose. His shoes are just on his shoes. He said, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. We need to believe in the power of being baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. And so we're going to be purified. He said, we shall be sanctified. Sanctified through by the truth of God's word. So we are sanctified through by the truth of God's word. Walking on the beast of God's word. That's how we get purified. He said, only pure in heart shall see God. And he said, be ye holy for the Lord I'm God. I'm holy. He said, holy thou shall no man see God. And we see here. 
Those that he invited have rejected. And a lot of us that says that we have truly accepted God so our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, we haven't. We haven't truly accepted that God so our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because we did each and every day. No, none of us are perfect, but we should be mature in, in God more and more each and every day. Our life should show forth that we are born again of the Spirit of God and we've been transformed. But a lot of us don't realize that we really do. We have to submit to God. We have to really submit to God and freely come to Him. Uh, as Apostle Paul, he said, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and supplement to the so be not conformed to this world, but be transformed through by the renewal of your mind. And that's what God told him. That is what Jesus told his disciples. He told them, you're going to be hated because I chose you out of the world. You're in the world, but now we're born again of the Spirit of God. We need to be in the world, but not live like the world. Because to mean the ways of the world is not pleasing God, because now we've been born again of the Spirit of God. So, but when we say we're in the world and we're born again and we're still living like the world, it shows that we have not truly been born again of the Spirit of God. Do there should be some change or transition in our lives where we want to live different, we want to talk different, we want to dress different, we want to think different, we want to treat people differently. Because he says you're going to be hated. We're going to be, he said, even that God that says suffer persecution is going to happen. But he said, those that suffer with me should reign with some individual rejecting gospel. Because they don't want to suffer. That's a part of being saved. Yeah. The devil that come to kill sins, drug us, I come. I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. The devil wants to kill us. He don't want to save because he has been kicked out of heaven trying to dethrone the master and Lord. And you see, the word of God tells no one is greater than the master and the Lord. And this servant here, he submitted to his master and Lord. We need to submit to our master and Lord and act like servants. Servants of God and do like this servant him. Everything that his master told him to do, he did. Will we, the word of God said, individual know that we are disciples because of love is shown towards one another. They said we are no disciple because we obey him. He said, If you love me, you will keep my commandment. We said, Oh, I love God. You love God. You love to sing these songs. I think you have to sing a lot of songs and, and song with no meaning and song with meaning and neither one of them is just something to be said in the song and get emotional. And emotionalism is not going to get us in. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my way to Zion up the King Highway. Oh, we are. <laughs> we see him. Going by the verse 24. He said, For I say unto you that none of those men which were good and shall taste of my supper. And I tell you, the word of God even tells us we'll be ashamed to own him. He's going to be ashamed to own us before the Father. Not only before the Father. Glory be to God. The angels, that's his administrators, that were coming back, separating them. The wheat and the tail, the righteous from the unrighteous, the sheep from the goat. Then he said, he tells them who to go get it. We have ministering angels. People wonder, well, how did he have the report? It's just like when Apostle Paul would be preaching and, and teaching the word of God. And how individuals would go, they would be in the city or go back to wherever he may be, other individuals. You know how individuals, you know how it was in our family. Individuals know who you are, they know who your family and friends are. You think we think we had and get away. I know it was like with our family. And I know a lot of individuals knew, they knew the law. And a lot of times, uh, my father, he worked at this company, and he worked swing shifts. So we know we wasn't a beat of children all the time. And our, my mother, we would do things that they didn't know. And sometimes we get out, we go clubbing and doing stuff, and individuals talk smack, and we talk smack back. And guess what they do? They go to, they are definite. They may tell mama, but they don't make sure they let my father know, because they know he'll cuss some fuss and act up. And that's what they used to do. <laughs> when he find out, we know he be going to work. We take off the car, we go here and there and do what we want to do. And we see individuals, and some of them stayed right on the same street our father stayed on. And they tell, and we know when we got told on, because my father's not gonna keep it to himself. He gonna cuss for us, take back the car, and don't want to do nothing for you. Mama different. I miss my mama today. Mama let you battle a lot, but I'm gonna tell you now, the word that God tells us that we need to chastise. That's why I said train up a child the way he should go to get older shit not the palm. Chest time is very important. Even Jesus Christ said, he said he chastised those he loved. He chastised because he wanted to save us from the wrath to come. And this here is a prime example. I tell you, my heart was really touched when he said they would not enter and have supper with me. We need to realize, my brothers and sisters, that we have an assignment. We need to realize what our gift is are for. And that's why I love to stir up the gift of the individuals, how that even going back to Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, uh, because we need to see here, even how we see here, with the excuses they made. Let's stop making excuses why we are rejecting the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's stop making excuses why we can't live holy for God. Let's stop making excuses. It's because my mama was a prostitute, my daddy was a drunk, 
uh, my uncle was a pimp. You know how you want to go through all these things and how that I only had one parent. I don't know who my parents were. I was adopted. My mom was raped. And I don't know who my daddy is. I mean, all these. Let's get over it. And they're just not saying that that ain't your mama, that ain't your daddy. We need to get over this. I tell you, I done got to the, I done got settled within my spirit. Now that I've been born again, and you should feel like this too when we get born again. Now that we are heirs of God, now we are joint heirs of Jesus Christ. Even sometimes your siblings say, you ain't my brother, you ain't my sister. You know how we got blended families and some of us don't have the same father and same mother. Ain't you know how kids are sometimes grown folks. But they ain't my daddy, no. they ain't got the same daddy we got. Their mama ain't our mama no way. They don't know That's that the sister is the mama. They don't know who the mama is and ain't the grandmama. You know how people, stuff that happened before you were born, before you and I were born. Now we're grown adults, and now people want to bring stuff from the past back up. Get over it. I made up my mind. Now that I am a son of God, being led by the Spirit of God, God himself is my father. I have my bachelor father, but I thank God for him. But we need to get to the point. No matter what, God said, a mother and father forsake you. He will be there. If you have individuals don't want to uh, accept you, reject you, he will never reject you. As long as we don't reject him. Let's stop making excuses. Let's learn to live in the joy of the Lord. Let's be a part of the kingdom of God. For he said, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is what joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Get born again and be filled with the Spirit of God. And let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Walk in the righteousness of God. Be at peace. <laughs> the word of God said they to keep the heart and mind stay in him should be kept in perfect peace because they trust him. You want to be at peace with God? Stop making excuses. You want to walk in the righteous God? Stop making excuses. You want the joy of the Lord to remain your strength? Stop making excuses. You want to really, really be healed? Stop making excuses. And that's why some of us not here today because we um, saying we're saved, but we're not believing to the inner faith that God is able to heal. Now, I'm not saying because some people haven't been healed and they're saved, but they may have affliction and affirm in the body. Where the God said, Men are the fixed of the righteous, but He would deliver them out of them all. Not only that, my brother and sister, He said He was wounded by our trespass, He was bruised by our nickel. That chastised peace is punished by His Christ will heal. Now, we need to see healing is not just always physical healing, healing is spiritual healing because we're sin sick. We are more sin sick. And that's why you got to be born again. People wonder, how can you be at peace with God in spite of what's going on? Because of the Holy Spirit within us and because of our relationship with Him. So my brothers, says, let's stop making excuses. I don't know about you. I don't made up my mind. And I pray you'll make up your mind today for today is the day of salvation. That you're going to make up your mind for God. You're going to live for God. You're going to die. That all these things that try to keep you off focus and try to keep me off focus, that we need to let it go. We need to let it go and press the words of the monster, the prize of the high call of Christ Jesus to wait us and prepare ourselves for that great supper because he even told his disciples that even when he, before Jesus died, when he had um, the supper with his disciples, he told them he would not eat and drink, eat of the bread and drink of the grape juice or the wine again until the kingdom of God. And we're going to have communion today at the end of worship. But I was thinking about it. Lord have mercy. I know that it's going to be even more greater than what we're doing. But we are preparing. So don't take communion lightly. Just see it. Think about it. This great supper that we're going to have with him one day face to face. Those of us that are truly born again. Because he said here, only those that are <laughs> that he will allow. So that means I would stop rejecting. Make up your mind. You're going to stop putting off the day for tomorrow because the day is not promised to you and I. The next second is not promised to you and I. Ephesians 4, chapter, verse 11 through 16, the word of God says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, to all come in the unity of faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried away by every wind of doctrine, by the slave of men and cunning craftsmen, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, and may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. That's why, my brothers, we need to realize that we're many members. We said the word of God says we're many members of one body. 
It means that we should see these spiritual gifts. These are not the only spiritual gifts, but these are the five folk gifts. Um, and it's saying that's what they're for. So we see here that when we'll talk about um, our excuses keeping it out of the kingdom of God, these are what these are gifts for. That's why we that are walking in these gifts need to make sure that we are living a life um, holiness, righteousness to God, a life submissive to God, a, uh, always uh, being a student of the Word of God, that we may know the Word of God, that we can tell individuals what the hope for the, for the hope for everyone in Christ Jesus, according to the Word of God, not according to ourselves, but according to the Word of God. Because the more that we are operating our spiritual gifts and use the gifts to bring glory not unto ourselves, but to the glory of God, and see them. No man, woman, boy, girl, out unto themselves that we are unified because we are born of the Spirit of God. Even all these spirits, spiritual gifts are given by the one self same Spirit. All of us that are born again, we all feel the same one Holy Spirit. There's only one Spirit. So we need to realize that we see ourselves as many members of one body, then we can have more respect and honor unto each other because what affect you should affect me because we are of a family of God. So we see here, my brothers and sisters, that according to the Word of God, that we need to make sure that we are prepared. We are prepared for the soon coming king and judge that's going to retire by one day. For you and I, we need to be prepared that as we continue taking heed to the word of God, that we walk in obedience. That's why he tells us faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's why we need to walk by faith and not by sight. Walk on what God says. We believe God. But we don't believe so much in our feeling. Yes, there's nothing wrong with praise and worship God and giving glory and crying out before the, the Lord. But guess what? Let it not be in most. Let it be from the heart. Because he said we can only worship him as spirit and truth. So we cannot even be true worshipers unless we are born again with the spirit of God. Because my brothers and sisters, how that even that when Jesus had told them, even in the parable of the great supper, even when he was talking about telling the chief Pharisee how that um, the individuals that he should invite to the devil. He was telling them both, invite the blind, the main, the heart, those who can't reward you. And it's too often we want to invite those that um, lack us, look like us, and act like us, and talk like us. We don't want to invite those that may. But guess what my brother and sister said? It reminds me of the word of God when they was invited individuals said that any even the individual that had gay and raiment that more looked more dressed, more lovely, probably more um, pious and dignified than the poor man with violent raiment. But they said the man, the poor man of violent raiment, was of great faith. So my brother and sister, the word of God tells us, God look at the heart of man, man look at the outer person. Let's stop judging individuals because how they look on the outside because sin is sin. I don't care what you look like, what you smell like, what you got and don't got, how much education you got, how famous you are. Sin is sin in the eyesight of God. The word of God tells us, for the wage of sin is still death, for the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, why don't you today? The word of God said, we confess that mouth on the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For a man believing the heart to righteous confession is marriage to salvation. We need to confess. We need to stop thinking we sin. We know we were born in sin and we know we have sinned. And some of us will still have sinned after salvation. And we're going to be tempted to sin until the day of Jesus Christ's return. But that's still no excuse. We can't need to stop blaming even generational curses when Jesus Christ has never made a curse for you or not. The word of God said, therefore, there's no temptation common to man that he has not already given. You are not already escaping if we want to escape. We got to want to live right. We got to, my brothers and sisters, we got to want to live holy. We need to make up our mind that for God we're going to live and for God we're going to die. And we're going to serve him while we remain here on the earth. We're just not saved to be saved, the name written in the Lamb, book of life, written in the heaven, to go to he the, the heaven. Then be servants. That's why Jesus said we should do greater works because he's going to the Bible. That's why he sent back the Holy Spirit even to his disciples. Saying Holy Spirit that embody you and I. That means service here in the earth. To finish the work he's given us in the earth to finish. So that's why we need to see my brothers and sisters like in Revelation 3.20. When it said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and him he with me. Sup. Think about it. The word of God said, "Ye abide me, my word abide. You should ask what you will shall be done unto you. He embodied us through by his word of God. He embodied us through by his Holy Spirit. That's why we are one. We are one the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are all one. That's how we can be many members of one body. Because the Holy Spirit that unify you and I. My brothers and sisters, will you today, there may be someone today that never accepted Christ your Lord and Savior the Redeemer. The word of God said, all we need is confess our mouth for the Lord Jesus. Just believe. Acknowledge that you're sin. Acknowledge that you're sin. For the word of God said, 
all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But only thing he wants to confess our sins. He's faithful and just forgives us our sins and declares us all unrighteous. So let's stop using excuses. Some individual said, I can't, I'm an alcoholic, I'm a drug, I'm swung out on drugs, I, I'm possessed, I, I have all kinds of different mental challenges in life. It's nothing too hard for God. God knows. We don't have to tell him. He knows we're as good as red. He knows our condition. We don't have to tell him. He already knows. Only thing he wants to do is to acknowledge that we have sinned and fallen short of the word of God. Acknowledge that we believe in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we believe. And that's what we do when we take a meal. We need to remember. We need to remember the suffering that our Lord and Savior, Redeemer, Jesus Christ went through for you and I. When the lambs, the goats, and the bullocks can do it. When other individuals praying and interceding could not do it. Jesus Christ himself, the only righteous one. The word of God said there's none righteous, no not one, but the Son of God. What did he do? He obeyed the Father and offered his life and rest for you and I. Just think about the crucifixion, what he went through, the nails in his head, hands and his feet, and the piercing in his sides, and the stripes on his back, but, and even the thorns in his head. For you and I, my brother, because of love, and to be ripped of his raiment, for you and I, and the gamma for his, his garments, because he loved us, an open shame. They mocked him and spit and beat upon him. Had to carry his own cross as far as he could. But what he say when he hung the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Glory. I said, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know about you. Jesus, when I think about it, that's what we need to think about. When we partake of communion today, when we think about the bread that represents his broken body and the juice that represents his shedded blood for you and I. He did it because what? He loved us. So since he did it because he loved us, how can we show him that we love him back? We can show him that we love him back by believing in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Believing that he died, he burned, he rose again on the third day for you and I. And he sent back the Holy Spirit to make sure that we still be unified, that we can still be to commune with him. Because we've been born again of the Spirit of God. Because he loved. I don't know anybody having a greater love than Jesus. <laughs> love. And even the love that I walk in is not of my own. It's because of the Spirit of God. Because we cannot love like he loved unless we're truly born again of the Spirit of God. Is there one today? They want to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior the Redeemer. You don't have to quote all these scriptures out of quote. You don't have to read Genesis and Revelation. Only thing you can do is acknowledge that you're a sinner, confess your sins, and believe in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then you'll be born again and filled with the Holy Spirit of God. But not only that, even during the confession of the sins, my brothers, we have to stop continuing walking those sins. And we need to start walking obedience to the Word of God. So whatever excuses that you've been having every time, we just need to stop talking about COVID because some individuals, is, I'm not telling you um, what you should do. I'm telling you what helps you to do. And that's not the forgiveness, the sake of sending yourselves together as with other believers. It may not be in the, whether you're in a church, whether you're in a tent, whether you're in a community, whether you're in your job, whether you have a church in your home, whether you may find a place of assembly. I know we still some individuals with different COVID and all these sickness and diseases in the earth. Then where the gospel they be? He said there'd be uh, pestilence in the earth, even with the economy. There would be famine in the land. Then where did God say it would be? Well, who are you going to trust them all these times? I ask God, thank you, Lord, bless my going out, coming in. God, whatever I need, you say, you supply my every need according to the world through our Christ Jesus. God does not want us to walk in the spirit of fear. Because we go everywhere else, we want to go and do whatever else we want to do. I don't know. I don't know when he's going to return. But I do know as king and judge, I don't know. But what I do know, people are dying by the second. But will they? Will we die in Christ or out of Christ? If we die in Christ, we will have eternal life. We'll live forever. And king of heaven, the king of God, and heaven will be our destination. But for those not, it will destination will be hell and torment and torture. Fire. Notion of the teeth. That's why my brother and sister, you need to choose to stay. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to go in the straight gate in the narrow way which leads to eternal life or you going to go in the wide gate which broad is the way which leads to destruction and the straight narrow gate is heaven heaven bound the wide gate which is the broad way is hell bound and those of us that believe in faith and know that we're on our way to heaven and our name written in the land with the life we should not just be so caught up 
on our going to happen. We should be concerned about those that are headed to the wide gate, to the broad way that lead to destruction, lead to hell. Because we were all born with a sentence to hell because we were all born in sin until we get born and get out of the spirit and the word of God. Praise be to God. My brothers and sisters, I pray I've said something to encourage you on today. We're going to really get into communion on today. But um, I just thank God for you and you on today and knowing that um, you are just as determined as I am. I pray so and believe in God's faith that you are as determined as I am. That I'm not going to no longer, even all, all I'm saying to the Spirit of God, sometimes excuses, unnecessary excuses for certain things. Um, sometimes I need to pray. I'm tired. I'm sleeping. I say it up there. I need to study. I can't think. I mean, or sometimes it could be just visiting other individuals, or sometimes it could be ministering to people. And I have to admit, I think get this charge. Sometimes I want to study and meditate upon the Word of God. And sometimes individuals may call or it may somebody may have died or someone will be coming to a service or a function or I have appointments so I need to do this, I need to do that. And um, I make excuses. And then it's kind of like, if it's any excuse we should have, it should be some uh, legitimate excuse. And that's why we should see that we need to examine the excuses that we make from this day forward. I don't know about you, but ever since I've studied the Word of God, I've been examining even my own self and the things that when I don't do, what I could do or should do, and I put it off to another time, which like today is the day of salvation, and some things that we need to do is the time is now. It's just the time and season for everything, but we don't want to do like they did in the Word of God when they were in this man invited them to the Great Supper. They had these excuses, and then did like at the end, and Jesus says that none of them will be at his supper. And we don't want him to say that when it comes to us and when it comes to not being at the supper with him. So even like Revelation 19, 9 is another scripture says, and he says unto them, unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. So my brothers and sisters, we are preparing now to be at that great supper. We are praying now to be there with him. And we need to make sure that we are preparing others as well. So now, my brothers and sisters, we're going to get into our communion on today. I just want to remind you that when we partake of communion, that we see ourselves being in separate locations. Some of you uh, may be in your home, you may be in vehicles, you may be out shopping, some of you may be still resting and watching so whatever you may be doing but now we're going to partake of communion if you don't have your um, bread and your grape juice with you now you can as you replay you can take it again and you don't have to do it just first Sundays you don't have to do it just once a month um, quarterly uh, every six months you can take communion I know some individuals take their communion every day and the word of God says all things you do this do them remember some me but as often as we do this remember say him let us make sure that we repent of any sins that we committed, that we come before him with a pure heart. He said, that's why many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep, because we are taking communion in vain. So we need to see this as a holy or sacred time when we are partaking of the communion. So we're going to go before God in prayer before I read Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 14 to 20. Oh, I say, Holy Father in heaven, we give you glory, we give you praise, we thank you, God, for the word of God on today. You say, your word will go forth and shall not come back for them. Your word should do what you seem to accomplish in the lives of your people. We ask even now, God, before we partake of your communion, God, that you will search our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, and we're sinning in the way of word, deed, or thought against you, God, against the Holy Spirit, against Jesus Christ, or even against our fellow man, so I say, that you reveal it to us, or you promise, God, that you confess our sins, your faith and just to forgive us of our sins, Father, to cleanse us all in righteous. We thank you even now, God, for cleansing us through by the power of your Holy Spirit. Cleanse us through by your anointing. And most of all, Father God, we thank you for sanctifying us through by your truth, your word, that will consecrate us even now, Lord God, to be at one with our brothers and sisters and being at one with you and the Son, even now in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you even now, God, for the communion as we park over to partake of today. The bread that represents your broken body that you take it from a natural to a spiritual use. 
Let it be purified, that we be a holiness of you. We thank you, God, for even the juice or the wine that you purify, God, in representation of your shed blood for the remission of all our sins, that we will remember, Father God, what you went through, through the crucifixion and through your death in reference to the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that you made it possible that we can have an opportunity to have a life of eternal life, that we can walk in divine healing. So we thank you, even as we partake of the communion today, we believe in faith. Those of us that have confessed our sins with a sincerely God, a sorrowful heart, God, that through faith, that we are thinking as we partake on today, those that need to be healed, that will be healed. Those that need to be delivered, will be delivered. Those that need to be renewed in the inner man of the Holy Spirit, that will be renewed. Those that need more of an uh, intimate, closer walk with you and with the family of God, that it will be done. And we thank you for it even now. Even those that desire to know more, get a better understanding of the knowledge, and understand of your word, that you, through by your Holy Spirit, you continue to grow in wisdom and stature your word, that in favor of you, God, and mankind, that you will give us a more clear understanding and the knowledge of the Son of God and of you God and of the Holy Spirit that we can live as new creatures here in the earth that we can be a living epistles for you that we can go forth and let our light so shine before men that they shall see our good works and shall glorify our Father which alone in heaven is you that we will no longer from this day forth make excuses that will cause us not to enter into the kingdom of God or even agree with other individuals that are making excuses that are keeping them from entering into the kingdom of God and that we will encourage those in and out of seas, decreeing and declaring the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that your house shall be full with those that are really in need, whether they lame, blind, or halt, or Father God, even whatever their physical condition may be, whatever their spiritual condition may be, that through thy our believing in the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and through thy your anointing that destroys every body of that we can be one with you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the family of God, in Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. My brothers, I'm going to, before we commune, I'm going to read Luke, the 22nd chapter. Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 14 through 20. And the word of God says, And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more. Therefore, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God, and he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Praise be to God. We see also... Um, Verse 20 said, Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And we thank God, my brothers and sisters, we thank God for the bread, the bread that represents his broken body. And I pray those of you that have it, that you will break and eat all of it in Jesus Christ's name. For those of you that have your juice or your wine, we can partake of this representation of Jesus Christ's blood and Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Jesus. My brother and sister, I want to thank you again for joining us this morning. Lord, minister today. I pray you continue to pray for me. I continue to pray for you. May you go be blessed of the Lord. And I pray that you will share the word of God with others. You go forth throughout this day that you always remember that Jesus loves you, and I do too. And thank you again. And God bless you all.